I don't know, but I think we deserve a bit of a lively event tonight. How good is this? Better, better. Okay, um, a serious welcome to everyone. But before we get into official welcomes, I think um, all the players just stand on up. Players, up, let's go. Every player in the place, there's no hammies, there's no quads, get on up. Everybody, a big round of applause for this playing group. All right, it's my absolute honour to welcome you to the 2022 John Nichols Medal. And for the first time since 2019, we are finally able to come together in the one room to acknowledge the season that was, and there's nothing better than being able to share this event with each and every one of you here tonight, which I believe is some 1,200 people. I'd like to welcome and acknowledge our major, our major sponsor in Hyundai, who have now proudly stood together with our great club for a remarkable 26 years and counting. Come on, a big round of applause for Hyundai. To our co-major, Great Southern Bank, a terrific organisation that's come on board over the last couple of years, a simply stunning organisation that's doing great things here in Australia. We're so proud to have you associated with our footy club. So to Great Southern Bank. To our incredible corporate partners who have stood alongside us despite the challenging climate of the last few years and are now ready to launch, emphasis launch, into the future. To representatives from our AFLW program who this weekend fly to Sydney to take on GWS in round six of AFLW season seven. We wish all our players and senior coach Daniel Harford all the best for this weekend's games. While I'm talking about AFLW, I'd also like to take this opportunity to publicly acknowledge the achievements of some of our players throughout last season. Mimi Hill, who was awarded the league's Rising Star Award. To Darcy Vessio, who became the first player to kick 50 goals. And to Karen Peterson, our brave, courageous, wonderful leader, Kez, who earned her third All-Australian in four years. Good on you, Kez. To every one of our partners and sponsors, a huge thank you. Your ongoing support of our great club does not go unnoticed, and it is, uh, it is just tremendously and greatly appreciated by all. To the Carlton faithful, I'd just like to welcome you watching online via the live screen at carltonfc.com.au. I'd like to commence my address this evening by firstly providing an opportunity, an opportunity for all of us to acknowledge the incredible achievement of our captain, Patrick Cripps. Our skipper, the All-Australian Vice-Captain, and as of last week, the sixth Brownlow medalist in the history of the Carlton Football Club. He was simply back to his brilliant best in the middle of the ground, winning contested ball, kicking goals, and leading from the front as he always has. And after one of the most thrilling vote counts in recent memory, he has now had his legacy cemented in the game as the AFL's best and fairest player for the season 2022. We couldn't be prouder of you, Cripper. We've seen firsthand over several years how hard you have worked and how much sacrifice you have made for this Carlton Football Club. 
On behalf of everyone involved at the Carlton Football Club, could I please ask everyone to be upstanding as we raise a toast and offer a round of applause for our 2022 Brownlow medalist, Paddy Cripps. So to Paddy, everyone, Patrick Cripps. It's not often you can't see him, so he's obviously sitting down. So, Cripper, well done. Fantastic. So, to 2022, wow, wow we! It started as a year of change, with newly appointed senior coach Michael Voss leading the charge, with a fresh outlook, along with his reliable deputies in Ash Hanson, Tim Clark, and Aaron Hamill as well as Luke Power and Dan O'Keefe. Give those gentlemen a round of applause. How do you describe 2022? Well, I'll try. It was a year of growth, a transformational one for our football club. We celebrated our most wins in a season in over a decade, including that glorious drought-breaking win over Richmond all the way back in round one in March. Nearing the halfway mark of the season, the Marvel Stadium roof nearly came off back in round 10, when that Zach Fisher goal ensured we came away with a victory against grand finalist Sydney. And it's always sweet to get one over the arch rival when we accounted for Essendon by four goals on their big night at the MCG. But when all was said and done, that elusive finals berth avoided us, literally at the very last second. Big moments in big games against top four oppositions in the final rounds hurt us and meant we weren't playing finals footy in September in 2022. A data point that will make us all work that hard over the off-season. From mid-March to late August, 180,000 minutes, 180,000 minutes, we were in the top eight for 179,999 minutes and 20 seconds. That hurts. But you know what? You know what? All it does is strengthen our resolve as we look to bigger and better things in 2023. Our playing group and everyone associated with Carlton will learn from this season. are going to come from these experiences as we continue to grow as a football team and as a club. There's been a lot of external noise about the measurement of our season. However, growth and success can be defined in multiple ways. And by no means are we satisfied, but right here, right now, we've got a job to do, and that's to improve. It's a testament to our coaching staff who, led by Michael Voss, have put in a power of work in the first year as a coaching group to get this team as connected as it possibly can be within a very short 12-month period. Vossi has an incredible ability to connect with people, instill uncompromising high performance 
and showcase an innate knowledge of what success looks and feels like. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the talent is here at Carlton. As was demonstrated in the awards handed out post-season, for the first time in over 20 years, we had three of our very own feature in the AFL All-Australian team. Give that a round of applause. How good was it to hear the woof back for Adam Saad? How good? Let's try that again. How good was it to hear the back for Adam Saad on his way to being named on the half-back flank as an All-Australian? Just as importantly, hold the applause because there's double sets for this wonderful gentleman. He was also named as a finalist for the Jim Steins Community Leadership Award for the outstanding work that Adam is doing off the field with the Adam Saad Academy. There was also the incredible season of Charlie Kerno. Wowee, give him a round of applause. How good to see Charlie back in the navy blue. He finished the season as the Coleman medalist, just 12 months after his great mate Harry took the award home some 12 months earlier. It was the first time in 120 years that a team has had two different Coleman medalists in back-to-back -back seasons. That's just the start. Our last two John Nichols medalists in Sam Walsh and Jacob Wiedering once again made the extended All-Australian squad. The impact of Adam Chera, George Hewitt and Lewis Young in their first Carlton seasons was a testament to themselves and also the awesome job that the list management team does. The work of Daniel O'Keefe and everyone involved with the Carlton Reserves to secure our spot in the final series for the first time as a standalone VFL side was so important for our merging group coming through. And of course, no one, no one will ever forget that moment in the second quarter of round one when Sam Doherty went back and nailed that goal in front of 70,000 people at the MCG. I'm sure everyone in the room tonight and watching at home would agree that that was the feel-good story of the year and just a true testament to the sort of bloke that Sam Doherty is. From an off-field perspective, we were so pleased to this season officially open stage two of the Icon Park redevelopment, formally inviting our members and fans back to our home for the first time in over two years. When the club set about undertaking this historic work, it was based upon achieving facilities for women's sport that would be the equal of our male counterparts. And it is with great thanks to the Victorian and also the federal government and our club donors that this objective has now become a reality. If you're yet to make your way down to Icon Park to check it out, be sure to do so soon, as it's a truly remarkable venue that honours our rich history while also providing a fully immersive experience for all of our fans. Our esteemed CEO, Brian Cook, along with our executive team, led the development of a new strategic plan, work that has culminated in a strong vision that will be the central point to what drives us through what we hope to be a super successful five-year period. Our club simply cannot be in the strong position it finds itself in right now without the support of everyone in the room. It's been a massive year for our football club and once again a round of applause for everyone here tonight. So on to thank yous. To our football department and administration staff, what an effort. Three pre-seasons and 42 games up to Christmas. AFLW, AFL, AFLW. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is simply unheard of. In truly unique circumstances, the commitment of the admin team and the football department has never waned. And on behalf of myself and all of the Carlton Board of Directors, I cannot thank you all enough for what you have and continue to contribute to the Carlton Football Club. We are so grateful to have you all as a part of the Carlton family. A round of applause, please, for an awesome football department and admin team. And finally, but arguably most importantly, a huge thank you for the support of our members, all 88,776 of you. It was another record-breaking membership year. You showed up in force all season, and the atmosphere at our home games is unlike any other team in the league. I'm still genuinely blown away every time I hear the, the roar of the Carlton faithful. It's simply unbelievable. We hear you, we see you, and we thank you. Thank you all tonight for coming. Best of luck to all of the players. Let's hope it doesn't give any heart attacks like it did on Brownlow night. Can't wait to see everyone out at the men's football starting in March. Have a great night. Go the Mighty Blues.